I'm Roy. Uh, I'm uh, from Israel. I'm really excited to be here. And uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, aliasing in C++. Um, so um, I'll start uh, as uh, people do with a uh, famous quote. Uh, so uh, all problems in computer science can be solved by another level of indirection, except the problem of too many levels of indirection. Uh, I think uh, many of you might have heard this already. It's a famous uh, quote in uh, uh, computer science, and uh, it uh, has some uh, something to do uh, to our topic as well. Usually when people speak about it, they, it it's a uh, much higher uh, level uh, uh, a perspective when they speak of design of systems and data structures, but it also has some things to do with low level, and today we'll try to touch upon them. So uh, my name is uh, Roy, Roy Barkan. I live in Tel Aviv, Israel. It's uh, almost midnight here right now. I've been doing C++ for quite a long time now, and for the last uh, 10 years or so, I've been working uh, with Istra Research. We're a high-frequency trading company based in Israel. We, are, we do uh, exciting things, and uh, we're always looking for great people, great C++ people to join us. Um, so let's start with uh, the topic uh, at hand, which is aliasing. So what is aliasing? So the uh, definition that I think is uh, useful is... Uh, place in, in our code, in our program, where two or more variables uh, refer to the same memory location and are being used uh, together. Okay, so we have uh, two expressions that are different, but actually look at the same place in memory. And a small motivating example is uh, this uh, piece of code over here, where, where we run the plus equals operator on a string. And that plus equals operator needs to somehow understand or make sure that it's possible that the argument that it's given is uh, the exact same uh, uh, string as its own uh, this pointer points to. And uh, if this string, for example, needs to do some reallocation and change some information in its internal state, it needs to make sure that it doesn't accidentally um, you know, clobber or overwrite information and that string that's given to it while it's working before, uh, before it uh, uses whatever it needs. So um, as you can see, this uh, uh, notion actually is about uh, a dependency. There's a dependency between those two variables, between two different expressions that exists in our uh, code, exists in our program, but doesn't uh, really uh, seem like it when we just inspect the code. Okay, so that's the basic notion. I should say that uh, aliasing is not about threads. It's not about volatile data. Uh, although when we think about aliasing and we think about whether our code suffers or might uh, have issues related to aliasing, the type of reasoning that we do has some similarities to dealing with race conditions and, and the such, because it's another type of dependency that isn't very, very clear when looking at the code. Um, uh, thinking about aliasing and uh, working correctly in, in a world where aliasing can exist um, can impact uh, both uh, uh, how we write our code in order to be correct, and also uh, can make some, have some impact on the efficiency and speed and uh, that's what we want to talk about uh, today. So the vast majority of uh, uh, this talk will be uh, made out of examples. I'll give various examples where aliasing can uh, bite us, can hit us, uh, and affect uh, correctness or performance, where code that looks reasonable uh, suddenly doesn't work as expected in terms of functionality or uh, time of execution. Uh, I'll talk uh, also about uh, how aliasing uh, relates to the C++ standard, uh, what the standard has to say about it. And then I'll try to give some guidance and some ideas on how to deal with uh, the various pitfalls, um, both uh, to uh, library designers, as well as to people in the standard committee and people who uh, write uh, compilers. I'll also talk a little bit about uh, what uh, uh, the future holds when it comes to aliasing, what work is being done, and what proposals are uh, in flight. And I'll end with uh, some discussion about uh, some uh, design uh, decisions and design questions that we might make. Uh, to take aliasing into account. Okay, so let's start uh, with the examples. So first of all, the, one of the most common uh, ones that we can think about is aliasing uh, that relates to function arguments. Let's look at this uh, example of a min-max uh, function. I, try, I uh, described it here as a lambda, but it's relevant to any function. And uh, this uh, min-max function accepts uh, two arguments uh, as input, uh, i and j, and uh, tries to uh, um, find which one is the, the minimal one, which one is the maximum one, and return it, them via output arguments specified as pointers, out min and out max. Um, there's a, an underscore here between out min and out max. Uh, there's, not, uh, there's no out uh, keyword in the language yet. And um, now let's consider what happens if we create an array of two strings, then we try to call min max, 
and uh, try to have that uh, uh, function sort the array in place. So put the minimum element at the, at the start of the array and the maximum one at the end of the array. Um, the problem is that, that this will not work. This code will not uh, do what we want. And the reason is that while we are uh, updating uh, out min and out max, they're actually pointing to the same locations where i and j uh, reside, and those were being passed by reference. And that, that and for that reason, when I write uh, 1111 into array 0, which is out min, it will basically overwrite the 2222 number, and uh, that way it will just be ruined, and the second uh, max calculation will not uh, even consider 222 as uh, uh, one of its candidates. Similarly, this can happen uh, not just uh, uh, with pointers, but also with references. Here's another uh, example of a, a concat function or a concat lambda that uh, accepts uh, one string and many other arguments and just tries to add them all together into one concatenated um, result. And uh, it, we can see that there's some use of lamb of uh, fold expression, but that's not the main thing here. The main thing is, that, again, that uh, if we write or try to run this concat with a variable x that says hello, and try to concat uh, world to it, and then again uh, the world hello, um, we, we won't get the expected result because uh, yet again uh, the x will be changed by the start of the fold expression and uh, this will affect uh, the rest of the fold expression. Okay, so again uh, in this uh, first uh, example we expected to get to sort the array and have a, a 1111 in the first uh, uh, member and 2222 in the second. And uh, in the second example, we expected to get uh, uh, the hello world, hello uh, result. Let's go to uh, 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 Compiler Explorer and see that the result is not as we expected, uh, where instead of uh, 2222, we received 1111 as the maximum element. And uh, instead of hello world, we received hello world, hello world a second time. So this is a little tricky. But uh, I hope that uh, by the next example or two, you uh, get the hang of it. Uh, and again, uh, aliasing, but not just with arguments, but, uh, but with other uh, places in the code. So this example is aliasing with a member uh, variable. So the complex uh, uh, class in STL is very, very similar to an STD pair. Okay, it basically holds uh, two members, one for the real and the other for the imaginary part. And if I take a complex number, for example, 2 plus 2i, and I want to multiply it by its real value. In this example, I would expect to see uh, 2, 2, uh, 2 plus 2i become 4 plus 4i. I will get uh, an unexpected result, again, because um, I'm trying to uh, multiply x by one of its own members. So there's aliasing between the argument of this multiplication and one of the members of the class. Okay, and similarly, another example is uh, with lambda closures. Um, again, here I want to uh, add some constant value to all members of a container. I use uh, the for each algorithm, and the lambda will add uh, the value to each and every um, item in the in the sequence. And again, because it get, gets passed by reference, uh, if I expect it to start with one, two, three, and uh, get a result of uh, two, three, four, just add one to each and every element, I will get uh, uh, some unexpected result here. Okay. Um, Let's see this example again in Compiler Explorer, and we can see that uh, instead of 4.4, 4, we received, we got 4.8, okay, because the uh, real value, which was 2, was multiplied by 2 and we received 4, and then the imaginary part, which was 2, now gets multiplied by 4 instead of getting multiplied by 2. And with the add to all example, again, instead of 2, 3, 4, we get uh, 2, 4, 5, because once uh, the v0 gets uh, modified, uh, there's no way uh, going around it, and the, the rest of the values will get uh, added, will get to have two added to them. Okay, so uh, that's again uh, some more examples, and this is a good uh, um, time to mention that this is all a perfectly legal C++. This is not undefined behavior. This is the way that the standard uh, is uh, defined and declared. Uh, so let's go to uh, yet another example, this time not with just objects, but with buffers, arrays of memories uh, that need to work with. And let's uh, try to implement something that uh, looks like a mem copy, where we take uh, uh, two buffers and try to copy information from one to another. This is So loop copy is my attempt to implement uh, um, copying of buffers from one to another. Again, we receive a destination and a source. And in a, with, in a while loop, I just try to copy a character by character one by one from start to finish. 
Um, and let's uh, write uh, some uh, test uh, some test code that uh, tries to uh, see uh, to to get the, the sense of uh, what this loop copy does. So in the test code, I'll create a long buffer having the word hello in it and an extra space in it. And I want to and my objective here is to move this hello one character to the left to, to have another space in front of it. So I try to call the function f, the loop copy, for example, to move uh, the information one character to the uh, yeah to the right. Sorry, and and then put a space in the uh, in the uh, location that I just freed up. And uh, again, I expect to see space and then hello and then a space, but uh, I will not. Uh, that's not the result that I will get. Right? Um, we already have seen that that when we uh, run our own loop copy code, instead of uh, getting a space and hello, I'll get uh, a space and then h h h h h. And when we look at the code like this, it uh, I think should be uh, quite uh, uh, easily understood that once we copy uh, the first uh, in, on the first iteration, we copy the h to overwrite uh, the e, then we'll copy this overwritten h to overwrite uh, the l and again the l again uh, and the o, and we basically ruined uh, our input information input argument completely. Let's uh, try uh, doing the same with the uh, standard functions from uh, uh, the C and C++ language. Okay, so SDR CPY. Uh, let's see how it uh, behaves with the same uh, uh, input. So again, we can see it's not uh, as good as uh, as we like. It's not uh, doesn't look like a paradise. Um, if we go for SDR and CPY, that's a different uh, 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 function in the, the standard. It actually looks uh, looks quite good. Memcopy looks quite good, uh, as well as uh, a memmove. Let's go from C to C++ and use uh, the copy n uh, STL algorithm. And we can see that it also looks uh, pretty good, which is uh, uh, nice. Um, and there's a good link uh, here below to see uh, all these examples. Um, so now we know a little bit about uh, the standard uh, library and the standard functions, but that's actually not really the case. If we move from Clang 14 to a different compiler, for example, ICC, suddenly we see that uh, memcopy also starts uh, misbehaving. And the reason is that uh, when we uh, do aliasing, many of those functions, they are, it's not that they have a, um, distinct uh, known uh, behavior, they're actually uh, undefined behavior. And uh, uh, the standard, if, if we have the standard look at the, all of these uh, code examples, the loop copy, we know it's bad. We know exactly how it works. When it comes to STR copy, STR N copy, uh, and mem copy, it's just documented as undefined behavior. Even if things look good right now as in STR N copy, it's actually just uh, sheer luck and there's no guarantees around that. And memmove is the only one that's guaranteed by the standard to work on these cases to be aliasing safe. And uh, uh, copy n is uh, documented as uh, uh, not as undefined behavior, but as an implementation defined behavior. So each and every implementation, each and every STL uh, can do whatever it wants with uh, those cases. So uh, we need to make sure not to uh, uh, be hit by that. Okay, so that's the example of alias buffers. Next, let's move uh, deeper into STL algorithms and into uh, sequences of data. So um, let's look at the uh, erase uh, algorithm, similar to erase remove idiom that you might remember from before C20. And uh, again, I want to uh, take a, a sequence that uh, has various uh, values with duplicates and just remove all the instances of the maximum element. Okay, so one of the items uh, is, is the largest one, but it can have duplicates. So I want to remove all of the, uh, the maximum element and all of its duplicates. So here I'm trying to use uh, the erase uh, algorithm from STL. I give it the uh, vector that I want or the range that I want and uh, uh, use the max element uh, algorithm, either the uh, iterator based one or the ranges uh, based one uh, to get a result. And uh, sadly, because uh, uh, those elements are inside the, the sequence that I'm trying to erase. The behavior will not be uh, as good as I want it. Uh, I should say that uh, the remove uh, uh, algorithm, which is very similar to erase, has documentation about this and says uh, that uh, we should not expect this thing to work, but the erase algorithm does not. Um, another STL algorithm is uh, uh, std colon colon copy. There's also std colon colon move, which works on uh, ranges and Unlike the regular std move, it actually moves stuff. Uh, and again, std colon colon copy, if I try uh, similar to uh, the example in the previous slide, uh, to take a, a sequence and just move it uh, in, onto itself or onto some, some, sub, some other slice of it, 
Um, I will not get uh, the results that I want. This is documented as faulty. It's not undefined behavior. It's just documented as information divide and faulty. And uh, the recommendation also refers to co the copy backwards algorithm, uh, which can be used instead if I know th the direction of the aliasing that I might suffer from. Okay. Um, last uh, for this uh, slide and for STL, um, I should say that, uh, or I could, should like tell you a little bit and, and show again uh, that uh, the aliasing that happens here is not just uh, for pointers, but actually for iterators. And again, here I try to use uh, uh, the stable partition uh, uh, algorithm, which tries to uh, uh, partition a, an, a sequence of elements based on uh, uh, whether they can confirm to some condition. Again, I'll try to take the condition uh, using an iterator by value and, con and comparing all elements in the sequence to it. So my expected result here is to have everything that's uh, um, that's not equal to the uh, to the maximum at the at the start of the sequence, and everything is equal to the, at, at the end. Um, and uh, that's not exactly what I'll get because again, the uh, stable partition is going to mutate and move things around inside uh, uh, my my sequence, uh, and Max also is an iterator into that sequence itself. So. Um, there is a documentation that says that uh, the predicates cannot modify the sequence uh, uh, that they are uh, working on uh, themselves. That's considered undefined behavior. But in this case, the uh, the predicate doesn't really modify anything. It just uh, looks at information and returns true or false. But the stable partition itself does the modification for us and hurts us. Okay, so let's uh, look at these three examples. Again, the erase uh, example, the copy example, and the stable partition in Compiler Explorer. And again, with the erase, both with the range, with the iterators max and ranges max, I start with a vector containing uh, three occurrences of the number four, which is the maximum one. I try to call uh, the erase uh, here in line nine. Instead of getting everything uh, erased and being left with one, two, one, three, I'm, I have uh, one, two, one, four, three, four remaining. So uh, things have happened, but uh, not what I expected. And if I uh, try yet again with the ranges max elements. Again, it uh, did something, but it didn't do uh, the entire job. We're left with uh, some uh, fours uh, behind, which is not what we expected. If we look at uh, the example related to the copy algorithm and separate partition, again, we wanted to copy, uh, as we tried in previous examples, A, B, C, D to the side, and uh, we're stuck with uh, A, B, B, B. And uh, we tried to partition and get all the fours just lumped uh, together, or at least, or moved away from. Um, and again, uh, that's not what we want, what, what we received. Okay. So um, those are uh, the functional examples showing uh, various cases where code that looks uh, benign or looks naive can actually suffer. Uh, now let's talk a little bit about uh, aliasing in uh, the sense of uh, performance and uh, the performance implications uh, of uh, these uh, aliasing. Uh, um, effects of the language. So here's an extre extreme example, okay? So in this extreme example, I uh, implemented the function uh, uh, foo that works on basically on doubles. It receives a vector of doubles and a coefficient that is received as a const reference. And uh, the function tries to uh, multiply each and every item in the vector by the sinus of the coefficient, okay? So that's uh, the function, and we'll try to uh, run as fast as possible. And let's say that even the function is documented um, telling the user that we don't expect the coefficient to be part of the vector. Okay, so if the, we, we already seen that if the coefficient were to be part of the vector, then uh, the result will not be as we expect. But let's say that uh, the coefficient is not part of the vector. That's what we tell the user, and the user, uh, whoever calls our function foo, actually uh, knows about that and, and uh, behaves uh, as we expect. But the thing is, the documentation works for, for people. It doesn't work for compilers. So the compiler doesn't know that. And uh, for that reason, the compiler can miss some opportunities. What are the things that a compiler could potentially do, but refrains from doing because uh, there's a risk of uh, aliasing, because there's a risk that the coefficient here is part of the vector v? Okay, so first and foremost, there's the notion of uh, deciding what information to store in memory versus registers, okay? The compiler, one of its jobs is to basically decide how to populate the register bank, what information can be put there, and uh, 
the thing about uh, registers is that they do not have addresses. Reg registers cannot alias by themselves. So once the compiler decides to move some piece of uh, uh, information or some variable from memory to a register, then uh, immediately it cannot alias. And if there's a risk uh, that uh, that address in memory is also pointed to by another variable, the compiler is suddenly no longer allowed to do as aggressive uh, um, allocation of registers in, uh, instead of uh, using memory each and every time. Um, secondly, there is a vectorization. Okay, compilers uh, uh, have uh, uh, know, know how to use uh, cool tricks by uh, the CPUs uh, that allow, for example, to perform several multiplications uh, in one go. Okay, so for example, uh, um, I think most modern uh, uh, most modern CPUs can uh, multiply four doubles or four pairs of doubles at a time, or even uh, eight pairs of doubles at a time, and uh, uh, this is uh, really cool, but the thing is that, that it can only work if we know uh, that uh, while we uh, multiply the first uh, uh, the first pair, it will not affect the, the multiplication of the other three uh, pairs of items that we want to multiply. If there's a risk that uh, as we're working in, in parallel, we're actually uh, modifying the uh, with our result the operands of another uh, multiplication, then I will not be able to do that. And uh, a, th a third uh, missed opportunity for the compiler is what's known as uh, expression hoisting. Okay, in uh, the case, uh, this extreme case over here, the compiler is actually very smart and it knows that the sinus operation is relatively expensive and also that it's uh, what's known as a pure function. Um, if I call sinus auto coefficient once, it'll get, I'll get the exact same result as if I call it uh, over and over uh, again. So although this uh, sinus call is within uh, a loop, the compiler uh, is usually uh, allowed to consider whether to move the sinus operation out of the loop, to just uh, calculate it once on the coefficient and then only do multiplications uh, on each iteration of the loop. But again, if there's a risk that uh, the item that I'm performing sinus operation on will change as we iterate through the loop, then again, it's illegal. It's, it's not uh, in the compiler's hand to perform this uh, expression hoisting. Okay, so these are three uh, missed opportunities the compiler uh, cannot uh, perform this uh, kind of code because uh, it doesn't know what we've told uh, our users that the aliasing should not be considered here. And uh, let's uh, uh, again go to Goldbolt and for Goldbolt let's go to a quick bench and see uh, how important it can be in terms of performance. Okay, so in this uh, case uh, the test by ref code uh, runs uh, the function as we've seen it. And test by val is a very very similar function but uh, instead of taking the uh, coefficient argument uh, by reference, it takes the coefficient argument by value. Once the coefficient is received by value, then there's no risk of aliasing and the compiler can create code 32 times uh, uh, faster, which is amazing. If you've seen talks uh, even earlier this uh, week uh, in the conference about the value semantics and about the writing code that's uh, value-based, a lot of it has to do with these sorts of things, okay? Great, so uh, we've seen all these examples. Let's try to summarize uh, where we are. And we are in a place, hopefully, where we know that anything is tricky. Okay, when we look at code and we, we write code, we don't uh, consider it, and it can lead to unexpected bugs. Um, the general expectation that we have, if I want to use uh, Dave Abrams' uh, lingo, is uh, independence. We expect some independence between our variables, between our arguments, and that's not what C++ guarantees. And compilers, they cannot ignore it. Uh, they uh, uh, always need to uh, consider uh, aliasing as something that might happen, even if we document that it shouldn't. Even if our code uh, doesn't have aliasing, the compiler might not know about it, and that can cause uh, uh, some uh, very steep uh, performance uh, uh, loss cases. And uh, just uh, two days ago, we've, we had a talk by Ofit Shilon, uh, who's also an astronaut, uh, talking about these uh, types of misoptimizations and about ways to I get a sense and get and, and learn from the compiler where these things uh, occurred. And if we write uh, our own libraries, we have to uh, keep that in mind. Uh, think about uh, uh, what our code can do in, term, in cases of aliasing and uh, uh, document it. And whoever uses libraries should try to read the, the uh, documentation. Okay, so the C language was, uh, I believe, the first one that I've uh, seen many, many. Uh, issues related to aliasing, and the reason for that is probably because it was the um, uh, the, the language where uh, arrays were basically uh, collapsed into pointers, and and uh, so everything was a pointer. Uh, an object uh, was a pointer, an array was a pointer, matrices, strings, everything was pointers, 
and uh, everything uh, were uh, was happening uh, all, all around them. And uh, for that reason, in uh, 1999, uh, the C language introduced a new uh, keyword to the standard called restrict. Okay, the restrict keyword uh, basically says uh, something that uh, in the C in C you can decorate. Uh, an argument or a pointer or an, or an array with saying that it is restrict. And a code block that has a restrict pointer or an array uh, can only change the data pointed by that uh, uh, restricted uh, pointer or array through through that uh, pointer itself. Okay, so it basically means that if I have a pointer that is restrict, uh, the compiler can know that it's undefined behavior. It's not allowed for any piece of the code uh, to change the memory pointed by this pointer by any other means except through that pointer itself. Okay, so that's part of the C language. Most C++ compilers, as you know, can process uh, the C uh, language in the C standard, so they have some non-standard support for restrict. Restrict is not part of C++ language, but many uh, C++ compilers have some ways to support it, and if you like, you can try to use it, although it's not part of the C++ language. Uh, Fortran, by the way, typically treats uh, aliases as undefined behavior, um, but there are compiler switches uh, uh, that uh, various customers or, or Fortran user, users asked for to assume aliasing because uh, uh, it, this undefined behavior was not uh, desired by them. Um, and newer languages like Swift and Rust, they also uh, try to keep that in mind and have uh, um, very complicated mechanisms to try and track uh, uh, the creation of references to objects and, and, and to slices of arrays uh, in ways that uh, aims to prohibit the risk of aliasing. And for those reasons, um, it's Things uh, that can compile in C++ cannot uh, compile in Rust, uh, but uh, uh, Rust users and Swift users know that uh, the risk of aliasing is not uh, as harsh as it is in C++ for them and for the compilers. Um, let's go move uh, from other languages to C++. Um, so again, uh, C++ uh, did not adopt uh, the restrict keyword. Uh, there have been uh, various discussions about it, but the basic uh, notion is that uh, uh, C++ is much more tricky than C, so adopting restrict as is is probably not uh, going to give the value uh, that you might want. Um, if you think about it, first of all, um, restrict is a new uh, argument qualifier. We already have, as you know, a, a const qualify, qualification, volatile qualification, various L uh, value, R value, etc. If we introduce another one, we need to think about uh, how this qualification relates to the other ones, what happens with function overloads, um, if I template on a type, uh, our, uh, is a restrict uh, a template uh, a different instantiation than a non-restrict one? Uh, are there any implicit conversions that could be done, et cetera, et cetera? And then there's also the thing that uh, when in C++, there's a this pointer, there are other pointers within uh, classes, and uh, lambdas, for example, are classes that are very, very thin, but if they hold pointers, we might uh, want those, them to be restrict as well, so it's uh, tricky stuff. Uh, I should say that in C++ there is a mechanism that should help with aliasing known as the strict aliasing rule. Okay, and the thing, uh, the strict aliasing rule in C++ says that aliasing should be type-based. Okay, so uh, it's not allowed for uh, two different pointers to do different types to actually alias each other and point into the same uh, location memory uh, uh, unless there are uh, two types that are very similar to one another. Similar types are, for example, uh, int and constant are similar. Uh, volatile sign uh, changes uh, is considered uh, similar. And the base-derived relationship also uh, has, uh, means that there are similarities. Um, on the other hand, uh, 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 there's also uh, um, this uh, grab-all wildcard that uh, uh, std uh, colon colon byte and car can also alias, in, alias with each, everything else to allow things like uh, uh, trivially copying trivial copyable types, etc., etc. And in C++, anything uh, else, if we create, uh, if you have two pointers to different types, for example, an int and a long pointing to the same address, that's uh, undefined behavior. And uh, to that effect, if you have heard of uh, this notion of a strong type def, or Alex Andrescu called it uh, a strong using uh, earlier this morning, uh, it's something that potentially can uh, reduce, uh, reduce risk in our code and also improve performance. Because if I have uh, two different uh, types that have the exact under, same underlying structure but are different types, then the compiler and our users uh, should be able to know that there's no risk of aliasing. Most compiler optimizers uh, are aware of these uh, strict aliasing rules, but they relax them to some extent. Uh, they favor a predictability over performance. Uh, they do not want to over-optimize uh, in case that uh, some uh, uh, code, some, some users uh, didn't expect 
uh, this uh, strict erasing rule to come in play and they do uh, mess with pointers, do pointing or arithmetic, uh, etc. Um, but whenever they can, uh, compilers do try to uh, prove whether aliasing is possible or not possible in a certain uh, piece of code. And if they can prove that aliasing is not possible, they will try to optimize the code uh, based on it. Okay. Um, and obviously in C++, there are some objects that are easier to reason about uh, than others. Uh, local variables, they live in the stack. So compiler can, has a pretty good idea of what's going on in the stack. So it can have a pretty good idea if there's, if there's any chance that there's some pointer pointing into the stack or out of it. And the temporary values that are created obviously are temporary and there's, uh, the compiler should have great knowledge about what might be pointing into that uh, temporary value and might, what not might be. Okay, so that's uh, aliasing in the C++ language itself. Uh, there are also some aliasing consideration in the STL. Um, so first of all, uh, the STL uh, tries to document the effect of aliasing uh, and sometimes to also mitigate it. So here's uh, an example of mitigation. Uh, if I call a, a pushback in, on a vector and try to pass uh, the first uh, argument inside the vector itself, um, as you might uh, uh, think or uh, you know consider if you try to uh, look at what pushback might do. Uh, the pushback uh, uh, is a code that uh, uh, sometimes needs to reallocate. And if I uh, reallocate uh, a vector, then I will basically move all of the all of the elements from one location to another. And if I do all this, if I move everything um, to another location, and only after that try to take uh, the, my argument, the v dot front, and move that or, or copy that as well into uh, its destination location then I might be uh, doing uh, something wrong and I might be uh, not uh, alias safe. Uh, so uh, the STL, in the STL, pushback implementation decided to be uh, aliasing safe. So even if you try to push back uh, uh, reference to an uh, element inside the vector, the vector will uh, behave uh, as you expect uh, at some cost, cost in performance, okay? Um, STD colon colon bind um, is, uh, you know, an old style C++11, uh, uh, closure object, and uh, the decision in STL was for std colon colon by to hold its uh, uh, members by value and not by reference to avoid aliasing uh, uh, at all. Uh, so again, there might be a performance cost. Sometimes people might want to bind things uh, by reference, but uh, uh, std colon colon by decide to do it by value to avoid the uh, aliasing concerns as well as lifetime concerns. There's also a std colon colon Valerie. Valerie um, is a, a container very very similar to uh, std colon colon vector, but was that was uh, written into the standard specifically for mathematical operations, and uh, in the wording of the standard, it specifically uh, have requirements to avoid the uh, aliasing. So here's the wording from the standard: uh, the expression address of uh, a bracket i uh, is different from the address of uh, b at uh, bracket j. Uh, for each and every uh, location in each and every uh, val array. So, every, so any two A and B val arrays, uh, when any two legal index to them, cannot alias with each other. Okay, that, and that's in the standard, just to make sure that that way the uh, STL implementers and the compilers can potentially make use of that and not get better execution. Okay, and then there's also uh, the execution policies in the C++ 17 uh, algorithms, um, execution policies, uh, for parallel and unsequenced uh, operations, they inherently uh, specify that there's no uh, uh, known ordering to the uh, operations that they do. Uh, the, those algorithms can happen at any uh, in arbitrary orders, and in that and for that reason, they are documented uh, such that you cannot uh, pass uh, to them any uh, inputs, any arguments, any uh, fun uh, like function objects, etc., that might uh, suffer from this like a change in the sequence of operations, and that uh, implicitly means that uh, uh, aliasing should not uh, happen there. So if you uh, use uh, these algorithms with the uh, par or par and sec execution policy, you're basically telling the compiler that you also know that uh, uh, you're not going to alias because otherwise this is all meaningless and it's, it's documented as undefined behavior, okay? So uh, I tried to use uh, um, to repeat my test uh, related to uh, aliasing, where I showed this uh, strong speed up move of moving by value um, using the STL algorithm. I tried uh, using a transform, std colon colon transform, as well as uh, transform with the unsequenced, uh, um, unsequenced execution policy. And uh, sadly, although the compiler 
should be allowed to optimize the unsequenced uh, execution. It didn't do it. And we can see that uh, basically uh, just passing things by value is much, much faster in, this, in that extreme example that I've shown before. Okay. Now let's talk a little bit more about strong type defs. As mentioned, strong type defs uh, are a way to encapsulate uh, uh, one type inside another in a way that uh, is clear to both users of our code base as well as the compiler. That these are two different types. And the idea is that we, if we use it, our code is both clear uh, to us and clear to uh, the compilers. There is no um, standard implementation for strong type defs, but there are quite a few uh, libraries that mimic the behavior. And here's like a motivating example of uh, where um, uh, strong type defs can assist with the uh, alias in considerations uh, when it comes to the compiler. Okay, so let's look at this function, may alias. You can see it's a template. It's templated on two different uh, potential types, uh, uh, one for the argument A and the other for the argument B. And we can see that this function basically changes uh, uh, the argument A, and then it decides what value to return based on uh, the argument B. Okay, so if there's a if there's aliasing at play, there's a, some chance that uh, this addition operation that changes A also affects B. But if there's no aliasing, then there's no such risk. Okay, so now let's uh, instantiate this uh, function first with uh, two arguments of the same type, A and A, that may alias. And then again, with two arguments of different types, A and B, that have the exact same structure that are, for example, strong type diffs for uh, integer. And here's what the uh, uh, Compiler Explorer and compilers have to say. And we can see that uh, uh, the strict aliasing rule actually worked here. And th there was a, there is a difference in implementation. And difference uh, actually can lead uh, to a better performance. You can see that with the, the AA example, um, the uh, compiler didn't really have much choice. It had to uh, load the uh, uh, A for memory. Uh, and then it also had uh, uh, it to, to compare uh, to do another load and compare uh, uh, the other, uh, like the B var variable from memory as well. Uh, well, on the other hand, uh, if we, we tell the compiler that the A and B are different types, then uh, things are uh, much better. We can just uh, load uh, once from memory the, the B argument, uh, change A in, in memory itself, and compare the B argument to two without con even considering the fact that uh, this add operation could have hurt uh, uh, the value that we've read on the B argument, okay? So here, that's a case where strong type diffs can help the compiler, not just us, understand that there is no chance of aliasing. So uh, how do we avoid the alias pitfalls when we write our code? Um, so first of all, uh, as I mentioned, if we just pass things by value, things are much simpler. Okay, value semantics are all the rage. There have been various talks uh, about it uh, in the this conference alone. Um, and if you are not uh, uh, keen on uh, copying things around, you should remember that move semantics and uh, copy elision uh, exist in the uh, in C++, and they can. Th that means that uh, basically um, uh, moving uh, things in and out of uh, uh, functions is, can be usually rel relatively cheap, and it can give uh, both uh, your users and the compiler more information about uh, aliasing. Um, if you do uh, uh, decide to accept uh, arguments by value, like std colon colon bind, for example, uh, consider supporting std colon colon reference wrapper. Okay, it's also known as std colon colon ref. Uh, reference wrappers are um, a way to try and mimic uh, uh, by reference semantics for functions and for calls that expect uh, by value semantics. Okay, and sometimes if my user uh, really insists on doing things by reference, I want to support them and uh, writing a code that works by value, and, but also except reference wrappers isn't uh, trivial, but if you do it, you might, might uh, cater to a, a larger audience uh, of yours. Um, and then of course, uh, try to use a strong type devs, try to use a uh, unit libraries, those uh, libraries that uh, wrap uh, the various uh, types in our uh, program with different names, with unique names. They can make things uh, uh, more clear for humans as well as uh, for uh, compilers. And if you have any aliasing assumptions, try to document them, try to have uh, clear contracts. That's uh, important. And uh, if you use other people's code, try to read that documentation. And if you have a very, very large user base, uh, consider writing defensive code. Consider uh, assuming that uh, they might not read the documentation. So either think about uh, verifying your contract and uh, do some assertions or throw uh, exceptions in cases where the contract is uh, uh, not uh, adhered to. 
or maybe even try to widen your your contract, try to make your functions like uh, pushback and vector uh, behave well even in the face of ADC. Okay, and uh, if it's possible, maybe you can even let uh, uh, the users control your contract. Write a function with a uh, where the user can tell you uh, what which contract it likes. The contract that's by value and might have uh, some extra cost of copying, or the contract that's by reference and might suffer from aliasing. Okay, and let's uh, look for, for some examples of how to write this type of code. Um, so this is like a, a basic function that I want to uh, ship in my library. It does uh, uh, an apply operation on a span. Um, it tries to, again, apply a certain operation on each and every item on the span, uh, along with uh, some uh, value that I receive as a const uh, reference. And again, this uh, function, I call it unsafe because it is uh, vulnerable to aliasing uh, uh, issues. And uh, I can uh, try and uh, enhance it to be uh, uh, user controlled. Okay, so this is um, my uh, attempt to basically have another extra argument uh, which is called pi pa pass by, where I can uh, uh, let the user choose whether they want to pass by reference, which is the default in my case, or pass by value. And uh, with this trick, I can use uh, uh, the colon colon type here of the different uh, uh, policies and choose whether to take uh, the value as a reference all through the operation or go ahead and copy it into its own value um, in case that the uh, uh, that's what the user wanted. Okay, and if the user chooses doing things by value, it's a different compiler instance. It templates instantiation. The user knows about it. The compiler knows about it. Everything should be good. And uh, lastly, if I want to uh, uh, be, be safe and uh, even not not trust the user to know to know uh, to tell me about the policy, I can also try and do that. I can use, uh, for example, in this case, uh, std colon colon less uh, equal to uh, compare uh, the the address of uh, the value v. Uh, with the addresses uh, of the span, and basically, based on this information, decide whether to work by value or by reference. And if the compiler is very, very smart, they might even know that the by reference call also might not, doesn't alias and optimize that, but that's up to the compiler. Okay, and uh, obviously this uh, check that I've put here is relatively uh, cheap in my case, but there are Definitely other cases and other algorithms when doing these types of uh, uh, checks uh, isn't an easy, isn't and potentially might not even be possible. Okay, um, so uh, are there any questions about this uh, section about uh, how to write uh, our code in an uh, alias aware uh, manner? I'll let you uh, write it that in the Q&A if you like, and I'll move on um, to talk a little bit about the future of, of C++. There are several proposals that have been in flight uh, for a long time, trying to add uh, more uh, consideration to aliasing semantics into the C++ standard. Um, first of all, we talked about uh, the restrict keyword. So there have been uh, various uh, attempts to uh, add the, uh, the restrict keyword. As mentioned uh, uh, earlier, uh, many compilers have some support, but Standardization actually doesn't look like it's it's slightly as I mentioned. There's quite a few complexities around it. Then there's a a proposal from 2014, a long time ago, called the alias set, which uh, basically tried to uh, let the users add some annotations to their code about the relationships between the uh, variables. Okay, and the idea is that if I annotate my code, uh, my variables, uh, my, my references, my my pointers, uh, the compiler can use that to know a little bit more about aliasing. Uh, I think to some extent. Uh, this proposal has some similarities with the, the way uh, the Rust uh, language deals with lifetime. They, they have their own annotations trying to, uh, again, tell the compiler and whoever uses my code uh, if whether the lifetime and, and the uh, provenance of uh, one uh, object or container relates to the provenance of other iterators, etc. Um, another proposal uh, that's uh, been uh, in, in the pipe for a long time uh, was to add uh, some uh, uh, attributes like, like uh, restrict access to std colon colon span or std colon colon md span and uh, use that uh, way to create some specific uh, um, you know specializations of span and md span uh, that uh, have these uh, type of uh, restrict uh, semantics. Um, this uh, was uh, again pushed uh, through the committee and then uh, uh, dropped at some uh, point. Uh, again, the idea was that there are some types uh, of you know ref with the that have reference semantics where aliasing is really an issue and maybe uh, there was thoughts to uh, deal with it. And again, this is currently stuck in committee, but there are uh, a lot of uh, voices trying to push this forward, uh, at least in MD-SPAN. 
Then there's another proposal from 2018 called STD colon colon disjoint, uh, which is meant uh, uh, to be related to the uh, contracts proposal as a way to convey that uh, aliasing in a consistent manner. So the idea is that there will be a function called disjoint uh, inside the STL. You can call it with two different uh, or several arguments. And uh, usually you could put it uh, inside the, like a contract, like a precondition. Say that my precondition is that these two arguments or these, uh, this, these two uh, uh, references are disjoint from uh, one another. So that was the idea with the intention that it's not that the code will run, it's just an indication to the compiler that if uh, there is like a precondition, if uh, these, uh, the arguments are not disjoint, then we're heading for undefined behavior. Um, lastly, there's a proposal uh, from 2019 by Herb Sutter about lifetime safety. Basically, it's uh, uh, trying to adopt uh, some more uh, core guidelines and uh, static analysis. Um, I'm trying to reach a, a level where if I write some uh, code that uh, adheres to the core guidelines, there will be static analyzers that uh, will uh, check an, or alert on cases where uh, uh, I might get uh, uh, aliasing. If I write my code and do not get these warnings, uh, then I know that uh, uh, non-owning pointers cannot uh, uh, alias or cannot uh, be passed as aliases. And potentially with, those, with that information, uh, compilers can also optimize. Um, so now uh, I have a few more minutes where I want to talk about uh, a way where perhaps we might be able to trick uh, the compiler into uh, you know, thinking or knowing or, or, or not uh, taking aliasing into considerations when we don't want the compiler to do it. And uh, the, the approach that I'm trying to take, and I'm telling you in advance that I'm not sure it's going to work, is, uh, is using uh, unions. Okay, Unions is basically a mechanism in C and C++ to have several objects put in the same uh, address. So it's very, very similar to aliasing in Notion. Uh, but the, the, the catch is that at any point in time, there's only one active member uh, of the union. And if you try to act to access different members, different variable that has the same memory location, this is un typically undefined behavior. But there's an asterisk, there's a, a special case. Um, the special case uh, is called the uh, 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 standard layout types and corresponding members, okay? Um, the, the C++ standard says that if you have a union of different types that are very similar to one another, then it might be okay to access both of them at the same time, uh, as uh, uh, although they are, one of them is active and the other the others are not. Um, and this potentially implies that strict aliasing rules can have some limits, and maybe we can use it and walk around it. Let's uh, uh, tell you quickly uh, what the standard uh, uh, says about it. So the standard basically says that. Uh, uh, it is allowed uh, uh, to access uh, a member of the non-active member if uh, it's accessed to uh, members or, or to, to, to variables that exist in, ex in the same location. So this is the example here. We can see that struct T1 and T2 have their first members A and C, which are integers, and it is perfectly legal to assign uh, the union with, with a T1 type and then access the unit in, union with the T2 type because A and C are corresponding members, okay? And now let's try to use it with a motivating example. Um, so let's say that uh, I have, uh, I want to implement a C++ conference. I have uh, uh, an entity system with various uh, C++ persons. Each of them has a name, uh, some level of expertise, and a lot of more information. We want to keep uh, one object in, our, in memory for each person. And then we want to implement a teach uh, a function that uh, goes uh, uh, through all the students and gets uh, them, uh, give them a lesson from a teacher. The lesson from a teacher will basically increase their expertise based on the expertise of the teacher. And uh, here we can see that there's a potential for aliasing from the compiler's point of view because uh, uh, the teacher might alias with the students, but we know that these things cannot happen. And can we use unions to express this and tell the compiler that there is no aliasing? And the idea is that what happens if we create a student and a teacher which are different types um, and that are layout compatible, and then an attendee will be a union that's either a teacher or a student, and that way I could somehow um, I use the same uh, object in memory, sometimes as a teacher and sometimes as a student, but the teach function will know that they're not uh, used in conjunction and strong uh, aliasing might uh, uh, come to our rescue. And this might be UB, it might not be UB. Let's uh, look at a simpler example where uh, I use the same uh, may alias function that I wrote before, um, but use it with unions, okay? So I have uh, these two types, uh, A and B, I put them in a union, and try to think what happens if I write an alias U function, accepts the union, tries to call my alias with the two members. Okay, I don't have much time, but I'll still show you that uh, it looks like it works. 
Okay, if we'll see it, we we'll see that ADSA function um, basically knows that uh, there is aliasing. It knows that those two uh, members or variables point to the same uh, location in memory. So it knows to actually compare the value with one. It knows that the value of one, if we multiply it by two, then uh, uh, then things uh, will uh, um, will behave as, as we want them, or then we should return a, a different result. But with alias, uh, with with the U example, the comparison is done with two. So the compiler assumes that there is strict aliasing, although it's the same uh, pointer, which is really really tricky stuff. Um, but sadly, different compilers with different uh, uh, optimization levels yield different results. So this means that this is probably UB. I tried to look at the standard and ask some people in the standard these forums. Uh, about this, and they can say that it's UB. I'm not sure exactly why, but that's the case. Uh, I don't really have much time to talk about variant state machines. I will say that um, there are, uh, as I mentioned, with unions, it might sometimes be very, very common where we would want uh, a variant to have uh, to have two different types that are actually very, very similar to each other, and we want to uh, maybe switch or compare uh, or switch uh, from one to the other uh, at, with very, very little cost and with zero cost, but it's not uh, really allowed. Uh, in, uh, with SED variant uh, currently, because uh, if we want to emplace into a variant, we first destroy or destruct uh, the current uh, active object before trying starting to create a new one. And uh, uh, that's a shame. And uh, again, I'm out, out of time, so I'll just uh, summarize and say that the aliasing is tricky because we assume independence. If we go to various semantics, then our life will be much, much simpler. Strong type of skills also assist. If you write uh, code for other people, try to document it and know that uh, the committee is working on these issues and trying to improve things and uh, communicate uh, with others and with the compiler. That's uh, important stuff. I'd be happy to take uh, questions either here or in Discord. Thank you very much. This was a pleasure. And here are some references to um, links that I've you know, shown before. Um, thank you very much.